the moment you want the truth, as badly as you just now wanted air, you'll find it. We can show you the truth, but you have to want it. Show me. I want to know the truth. My name is Rob, and uh, I go by T-Virus. I express myself as a living doll. There is also the agenda of confusing the sexes in society. The elite want to destroy the family. They are trying to destroy traditional values and also just confuse the masses so that they don't understand uh, the God-given design of things. But they are God-haters and they are after destroying the designs of God. So that is why they are using this propaganda campaign to fulfill that agenda. Nothing but staged propaganda to fulfill an elite agenda to confuse the masses so that sexuality is come under attack. So when these new philosophies uh, start being preached through the media that, you know, sex is uh, a social construct, there's no such thing, a boy can be a girl and a girl can be a boy, all this stuff because technology is now available, that these mindsets and ideas will be accepted. So this is an elite propaganda campaign absolutely through and through. They're taking uh, someone who represented as an Olympian uh, maleness, manhood, and then now they're turning him into a female. The mental insanity that continues to come out day by day in the world around us, the people who are just coming forward and pretty much admitting that they're mentally insane and embracing it, and others are embracing it saying, well, it's their choice and it's their right, now we have a woman who is admitting that she's in an intimate relationship with a tree. Emma McCabe, 31, revealed in an interview that she's in love with a tree. His name is Tim. Have you ever met someone that's named a tree? Let alone been in an intimate relationship? She says, my feelings are genuine. I've had boyfriends, but never connected with anyone like Tim. I'm in love and would like to get married. She wants to marry a tree. I look at other trees, but don't touch. I wouldn't cheat on Tim. So she's looking at some birch trees and some cedar trees, but she's remaining loyal to her tree, Tim. Hello, hi. Anybody else out there think that this woman has a mental problem? Is it just me? Or should I respect her, her right? to be in love with a tree? Or should I think that we need to find a doctor in this woman's town? Pay, I'll pay for the doctor. Send him to her home immediately. Have her committed. She should not be roaming free. But somehow this story gets sicker. She goes on to say, he fulfills my emotional and sexual needs. She's having sex with a tree. Isn't this illegal for starters to be outside having sex with a tree in public? How is this going on? He fulfills my emotional and sexual needs. I orgasm by rubbing against the bark naked. I love the feeling of skin on bark contact, which gives me a more pleasurable pain sensation and the feel of his leaves against my skin makes me tingle. I have sex with him every week. It's the best sex I've ever had. Do I need to reread that disgusting, disturbing paragraph? Or does everybody out there get the hint? Is anyone in this town getting the hint? They're okay with this woman going out into the woods having sex with a tree? Of course society's okay with it. It's her right to do it. We should embrace her love with the tree. Soon we'll have people marrying and having intimate relationships with fire hydrants, with plungers, possibly refrigerators, maybe even parking meters. I mean, when does the insanity stop? She's not only admitting to being in love and in an intimate relationship with a tree that she's called Tim. She's named the tree. She's in love with the tree. She wants to marry the tree. She's admitted that she never cheated on Tim. She's looked at some birch trees and some, you know, some pine trees and some cedar trees, but she's remained loyal. Good for you. I'm happy for you, Emma, that you stayed faithful to your tree. Oh my goodness, please. And we're supposed to accept this and embrace this? 
How are these people roaming free? How many times do I have to ask, where are these padded rooms that we see, that we know exist in these hospitals? And who's getting put in there? And why is Emma not in one of these rooms along with the transgender human dragon, along with the 52 year old man that now is living life as a six year old girl? These people are free. One can only hope that a child isn't out in the woods, you know, playing or doing something or fishing and he doesn't see Emma having sexual intercourse with Tim the tree. But of course, they'll say, now just look the other way because Emma has rights and you have to respect Emma's right to be in love. If the tree makes her happy, you need to accept it, okay? You Christians are bigots, okay? Yeah, there's no perversion behind this. There's no mental problem behind this. No, this is normal behavior, okay, in the end times, folks. This is normal accepted behavior in the end time period. This is embraced. People are all about this stuff. I mean, who knows what people are gonna be allowed to marry next. We've already talked in this channel about pedophilia is gonna become legal, bestiality and marrying your pets is gonna become normal. Now we have women having sex with trees, marrying trees, loving how the leaves and the bark feels against their body. Soon we're gonna have people marrying their front doors. We've got the dog people dressing as dogs, the pups, the pup community. Now we have a woman who wants to marry, legally marry a tree. She's talking to the tree. She's having sex with the tree. She's admitting to being loyal to the tree. She admits she looks but doesn't touch, so she, she checks out the birch tree in the distance. Are you kidding me? More and more perversion is being allowed to happen. There's a book called The New World Order, which was written by A. Ralph Epperson, who's written uh, several of these books, types of books on the New World Order. Now this was written in 1989. Okay, so let's take a look at what they wrote here, or he wrote. The New World Order will include changes in the family. Homosexual marriages will be legalized. Parents will not be allowed to raise their children. The state will. All women will be employed by the state and not allowed to be homemakers. Divorce will become exceedingly easy. Monogamous uh, marriages will be slowly phased out. The workplace. The government will become the owner of all factors of production. The private ownership of property will be outlawed. That's Agenda 21, of course. Religion. Religion will be outlawed and believers will be either eliminated or imprisoned. There will be a new religion, the worship of man and his mind. All will believe in the new religion, the new age religion, of course. So uh, this book was ahead of its time, obviously. There you go. I mean, this is exactly what's happening right at this moment i mean we're seeing marriage being attacked religion being attacked um they ridicule religion everywhere you see in the music industry how all the hip-hop stars come out and claim that they're god they mock god one thing that you're going to be dealing with as a christian is uh it's going to be hard because the world is calling this good. And as you can see here, Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 tells us, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, and that put darkness for light and light for darkness, and that put bitter for, uh, for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe means great sorrow or distress. So God, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit written through the prophet here, is saying, great sorrow and great distress to them that call evil good and good evil. God clearly declares by his word that this is evil. This is an abomination before him, in fact. It's an attack against his created design and order, and it is blasphemous to do that because we are created in the image of God. Man, Caitlin, or Bruce was, was created in God's image, and it's a mockery, it's a blasphemy, it's a rebellious attack against his creator to do that, created in the image of his creator. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service.
present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. female join together and produce one and this is this is this is prevalent everywhere it is the male and the female producing one in other words join together in one now there's nobody in this house this morning that's both male and female you may think you're a female when you're a male but you're not you may have been brainwashed to the point in this perverted society that we live in to think that what you think in your head is what you are biologically, and you're not. And uh, you, are, you are born either male or female. And, uh, but in any event, the idea that both male and female converge into one is occultism, and it's deeply rooted in Satanism. And if, uh, if, if some of you were here the last time we met, and I told you what's happening now with Obama, and with the transgender bathrooms and all of this stuff, they're forcing this spirit down the throats of the people. This is important now. This is, this is a critical point that I'm about to make. All right? This is very critical. It's not that the occult world believes that the, that the feminine and the masculine come together and create one. That's not important. They've always been that way. And they've always worshipped a goddess over a, a, over a male god. They've always been that way. But here's the point. The occult world talks about what's called a harmonic convergence. They talk about when all of the spirit of mankind converges into one universal spirit. It's called a paradigm shift. In plainer words, it is a complete change from the normal view and from the way people think into a new way of thinking. And by doing this, they are receiving another spirit. If you allow yourself to become comfortable with the idea of a of a of a androgynous being which is both male and female in plain words here's a biological male but if at noon he thinks he's a female it's okay that's what's going on right now so you've got the merging of the two and by receiving that spirit you have received the spirit of antichrist and you have received the spirit of hell, and it is at your doorstep. Because you're going to have to make a decision. And that decision is, will I accept this spirit now that my governors and my mayors and my senators and my representatives and, 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 the, and, the, and the medical establishment and the educational establishment, all the stuff that they're handing me, I'm going to, am I going to receive this or am I going to reject it and turn back to the Bible? You've got to make a decision. So this is what this is all about. And it's a very important thing because uh, this is what I see. I mean, I've been, I've been giving you a lot of stuff, but all this stuff is coming down to a point. It's like a funnel. It's like a funnel. A funnel's got a huge top, but it comes down to a small bottom. And that's what's happening. It's like a dovetail. A dovetail goes out like this, but it comes into a point. It's focused. It's like, uh, it's like a telephoto lens, or it's like what's called a focal length. The point where it where, it, where the light is brought into, brought into uh, clarity and, and it's at that point, that's what's happening right now. It's coming to the point where you've got to make a conscious decision. Will you reject or will you accept the spirit of this age? Amen. Now, the spirit of this age is being identified every day you live. These people have an agenda. They're smart people. They know what they're doing. They're like the old Roman uh, I don't know if he was a Roman senator or what he was, but I heard somebody quote him the other day, and I thought this was quite a remarkable quote. Here's what this Roman senator said 2,000 years ago about the mass of the people. He said, give them their bread and their circuses, and they'll be okay. And do you agree with that? Give them their six-pack and their sex and let it eat. 
as long as my little parlor's not messed up, I don't care what the world does, I'm going to go on and do my thing. You go do your thing, and you'll wind up taking the mark because you've already made your decision. Your decision is that you're going to, decide, you're going to survive. It doesn't make any difference what comes down the pike. And once you make that decision that you're going to survive and it doesn't matter what comes down the pike, you will take the mark. You've made the choice. And right now, you're making the choice. Right now, you've been presenting with a choice. Rob Bell is a former megachurch pastor turned spiritual advisor to Oprah Winfrey. How many has ever heard of Oprah Winfrey? <laughs> Are you better for it or worse? <laughs> uh, Rob Bell, former soul father, said that the culture is ready. Now listen, he says that the culture is ready to embrace homosexuality and same-sex marriage, and if the church hopes to stay relevant, it must accept those relationships and stop looking to the Bible as its best defense. Here's a quote from him. He said, I think culture is already there. Oh, I know it's there. And the church will continue to be even more irrelevant when it quotes letters from 2,000 years ago as their best defense. Are you listening to this? When you have in front of you flesh and blood people who are your brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and co-workers and neighbors, and they love each other and just want to go through life with someone, Winfrey stated the obvious. You sound really progressive to me. Yeah. Now, you live in a culture that has buzzwords. You live in a culture where people, where people, where people categorize you and if they use a certain buzzword on you, then you are from that moment marginalized and demonized. Then they can say anything they please about you. If somebody tags you as a bigot, you're finished. Because there is a, there is a, there's a huge number of people in this country that if somebody is a bigot, been, been classified as a bigot, then, you know, they're demonized. Nothing they say matters. It's the same crowd when they stick a microphone up under their mouth and say, oh, who did we fight in the Revolutionary War? I hope you know. And they didn't. They didn't. Or they stick a microphone up under their nose and say, uh, <clears throat> uh, who fought in the Civil War? And they didn't know. Do you think the public school system has done a good job? No. Yeah, they, well, no in one sense and yes in another. They have done an outstanding job of dumbing these people down to where they're nothing in the world more than controllable sheep that live for their bread and their circus. I wanted to report on Miley Cyrus being used once again to very clearly fulfill a satanic agenda in the world today to mind control the masses and make them think that gender doesn't exist and that it's over. Check out her t-shirt, gender is over. This is a new world order agenda of the elite and Satan himself to attack the very word of God. So now there's articles coming out and obviously the world is you know, accepting this and promoting this as a good thing, because as I've stated before, what is a, is highly esteemed among men is an abomination to the Lord. So what it, the majority of the world accepts as good, you can count on the fact that, well, more than likely God says it's an abomination. Uh, so here, Miley Cyrus wears gender is over tank top. She's all about stylish acceptance. And uh, the LGBT community, everyone thinks this is a fantastic thing. But what is this really about? This is absolutely twisted. And let me point out now, Miley Cyrus is not the only one in the entertainment industry using the power of influence that they have to promote this satanic agenda. Nine other stars making gender fluidity mainstream. So nine other stars that are going to use the power of influence that they have in the media, in the entertainment world to fulfill a satanic agenda to blur the lines and attack the very word of God. I don't know many of them. Laverne Cox, Miley Cyrus, Janet Mock, Ruby Rose from Orange is the New Black, etc. So some 
pretty uh, influential people out there who are starting to promote this satanic twisted agenda. Now, one thing you need to understand about the music and the entertainment industry is that it is controlled by a secret satanic cabal and they need to promote satanic agendas. And when um, Tiffany Evans, a few years ago, uh, posted this about Rihanna, she gave us an insight to what exactly is going on in the entertainment world. So I'll read for you what she says. You gotta watch what you say, because there are a lot of weak people in the world. They are susceptible to anything, so anything you say or do, some people actually do listen. So make sure it's nothing bad. It's okay to be deep, but not murder deep. She was saying this in regards to Rihanna's song, Russian Roulette, which she said equals suicide rate gone skyrocket. Man, I really wish I could tell you guys what the industry really is. Okay, this is what I want you guys to pay attention to. And what stars are a part of destroying this world. The stars who worship Satan and those who have killed to get the respect that they now have. You'd be very surprised. Some of your favorite people pretend to worship God, but they only do that to save face or seem innocent. Satan was head of the music in heaven. He uses influential people to help influence the world. Think about that. Once you make a certain amount of money, just know that that's when they, and what she's saying is the elite, the secret cabal, the Illuminati, this Gnostic Luciferian cult running the entertainment industry, ask you to join them through their weird initiations and rites. To get in, you have to accept the beast, which is Satan beast worship so the worship of the beast of Satan of the lower things of humanity once you join they assist you with your career like give you the job to be the host of the MTV music awards this year make you huge only if you agree and obey pay attention right here obey to destroy God's word and his children okay so they take a satanic oath to a secret cabal running the entertainment industry and they have to attack God's word. That is why they are promoting this homosexual agenda which is an attack against God's word. And so is this gender is over because if gender is over well what happens to Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 from God's eternal word that never goes away that will be is and always will be it says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, God, Yahweh, Jehovah, the mighty creator, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and end, he created them, male and female. So when she comes on the scene here and says gender is over, what she's actually saying is that Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 is over. And as you see, music artists that sell their soul in the entertainment industry to this satanic cabal that this insider exposed have to agree to worship Satan and attack God's word. So this entire agenda where they're going out and trying to eliminate gender, they're trying to eliminate Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 from the world by promoting anti-biblical, anti-truth, anti-Christ nonsense, garbage, and brainwashing the masses, using the popularity of media and all that nonsense to control the masses to make them think that Genesis 1 verse 27 is non-existent, when it always will be. God the Creator created us male and female. over this nation. You need to run and flee this place. 
One of the things that they're trying to do here is destroy the family because, especially in the United States of America, we have a uh, country that's been built on very strong Judeo-Christian values. And to the socialist, communist, Nazi, New World Order, secret shadow government working behind the scenes to collapse our nations, to bring about a one system world order, uh, out of that, this is the worst thing possible. A free and independent uh, United States that continues to uh, stand for its Judeo-Christian values and, and have integrity and, and be a people of God, that is not what the enemy um, can have and in fact has made the United States target number one. So that's why we see uh, the New World Order cabal trying so hard uh, to go after the United States. I mean, it, it is enemy number one to their system because uh, they need to have independent nations collapse in order to bring in uh, a new system. So they want uh, the Judeo-Christian values to erode uh, because this is the fabric of the society. The uh, structure of, of the society of the United States is built on Judeo-Christian families and they know they need to disrupt that. And the Judeo-Christian family model is a man and a woman. And that's why uh, they're uh, confusing people. They're, they're adding chemicals in the water to sexually confuse people, hormones and stuff. People are literally born uh, with these hormones imbalances which is all part of the chemical design as well uh, they do it through media social engineering brainwashing the kids as we're seeing now they're uh, whether it's them specifically or this is just um, a byproduct of their mind control there's books being created about cute little teddy bears that are in fact evil dressed up as good to deceive our children so we live in times right now, church, where we need to rise up and see that the enemy is doing things. The Bible tells us that we can't be ignorant of Satan's devices. And the sad thing is, most pastors are not talking about this. I, I know uh, the majority of your churches are not dealing with these issues. Um, and that is why it's important to have these type of ministries that look at these world events from a biblical worldview. And you need to encourage your church and your pastors and your friends and everyone to start doing this. We live in critical times. And if we can't see what the word of God uh, has to say, we're not going to have a light on these things. We're not going to really see. The King James says he is not the author of confusion. And realistically, when a child is deciding to, you know, explore the other sex, when it was clearly born physiologically a boy, physiologically, biologically, at the chromosome level, a, a girl, there's confusion going on there. And the Bible clearly says that Yahweh, uh, the, God the Father, Abba, is not the author of confusion. An author is someone who gives birth to something. And if I was to author a book, I would write it. So he does not write confusion into the lives of people. This comes from the enemy. Uh, if you're engaged in this type of confusion or any type of confusion about things that just uh, in this life, uh, you can know that the source and the author of that is not God. And, and in fact, it's Satan doing exactly what Satan does, disorder and confusion. So be on, be on guard, be vigilant. But this manifesting in our world, this shows that Satan culturally is grabbing us. There's a grip that he's taking socially in the culture here today because now we see um, a, a society who at large is embracing this confusion and disorder as normal. So they're normalizing the sin, they're normalizing uh, the depravity of man and accepting it. And, and trust me, later on, uh, they're even going to go as far as saying that uh, transgenders are blessed. Uh, I, I, I remember watching an episode of Oprah way back in the day uh, after they had the secret and they had a couple of their teachers and, and on their uh, teacher, well, <laughs> satanic teacher on there and they were talking about the fact that being gay was a blessing from God so trust me down the road you will see that this also they will consider it a blessing and it is a blessing to them and their God it's Satan but they are on the path of destruction the wrath of God ab abides on them and they are satanically deceived uh, so so th this is what we're dealing with here and and, and now uh, you can even see Barack Obama and I've talked about this repeatedly uh, when we dealt with this issue it takes courage to share your story so woe unto them that call evil good and good evil 
Um, we need to pray for our leaders, but uh, this just shows us, again, looking through the, the biblical worldview, where the nation is. We have a nation here that is praising abominations and wickedness, and this is a cultural change, and it's happened very quickly in the United States of America, which gives a sign of the times that we live in and what season we're in, church, and the need to pray uh, for everyone right now that is uh, being um, exposed to, to, to this to what Satan is doing in our world today. King James uh, translates it to, is abomination in the sight of God. So you see here, do not be surprised that the world is praising this, that Obama uh, is saying that this is courageous, that he is calling evil good and good evil. Do not be surprised uh, that uh, Bruce received the ESPY uh, or SP award um, for courage because they view this as courage because this is them calling evil good and good evil. Um, but uh, do not fall into the trap of being someone who uh, starts to justify the wicked. A lot of Christians in the name of love want to justify wickedness, but that is not true love. True love will never justify wickedness. Uh, Proverbs seventeen fifteen: he that justifieth the wicked and he that condemneth the just even they both are abominations to the Lord. Um, so you can't defend this. You have to stand up in love and proclaim the truth of God against this wickedness. In southern China, a man decided to go to the grocery store wearing uh, high boots and just underwear with his butt exposed, quote unquote, his buttocks was exposed, he was wearing underwear, shoppers stopped to take pictures, and you would think that maybe the police would come and arrest this man for being practically naked inside of a grocery store, but instead, people were complimenting him on his courage and on his bravery. One person says, today at the mall, I was stunned to see a foxy man in high-heeled boots, just breathtaking. I was dumbstruck. Yeah, you got dumb, all right. These people are doing whatever they want. Soon it's going to be people are walking around naked. Was anybody offended who had children there? I mean, parents have become so stupid that they think something like this, their kids don't process in their brains. If they see that, it's no big deal. It has no effect on them whatsoever because parents are absolute buffoons this day and age. Absolute buffoons. And what is next to come is people won't even have to wear clothes. I'm telling you, that is what this is going to turn into. This is more conditioning. This is more of being allowed to do whatever you want. Aleister Crowley's do what thou wilt mindset. Okay, will be the whole of the law. That will be the law of the land. This convention tonight is being warned here and now of an intense hour of persecution for all spirit-filled believers. You're to prepare to be hated, rejected, maligned, and ridiculed. Now, if you believe Acts 2-4 about a special doom of the power from on high, then you've got to also believe Acts 2-17. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions. I saw a vision this past April, so frightening it staggered my mind. And for the past three months, I've tried to shake it off. But I can't do it. I've only had two in my life. The first, 15 years ago, took me to the streets of New York, and every fact of that vision has been fulfilled. I've been terribly afraid to share this vision up till tonight for fear I'd be called a fanatic. But the same Holy Ghost that prompted me 12 years ago to share the story of the cross and switchblade has prompted me tonight to share this vision with you. A flood of filth and a baptism of dirt in America. I see the prophecy of Nahum coming to pass in the very near future. God said, I'll pour abominable filth upon you. This means triple X-rated movies on cable television after midnight. This means R-rated movies within the next few years on network television. This means our newsstands are going to be flooded with such filth that Playboy magazine will look like a puritanical piece of trash. It means sex education classes in school will be using animated cartoons and film dramatized sexual intercourse. And just when it appears there's going to be a successful campaign against smut, just when the Supreme Court seems to be 
ruling against pornographers, when it appears the nation's returning to old-fashioned moral standards, suddenly the floodgates are going to swing open and Satan is going to vomit filth out of hell and it'll be just as it was in the days of Lot and will vex the souls of God's most devout, devout saints. NBC News report says that someday we will be microchipping all of our children because that is who they're coming after. They are targeting and coming after your children. And if you don't believe me, you're going to see in just a second. And with this whole biometrics and terrorism agenda, they're going to keep pushing it because we know darn well that they're planning to biometrics and chip everybody sooner than later. But what they're also going to do is they're going to say, oh my goodness, well, because of security and for your safety and security, you need to be chipped and oh if you don't do it you could be a terrorist i'm telling you folks it's going to get to the point where they're going to be chipping just so you can walk down the street they've already started with passports and credit cards and debit cards it's only a matter of time until it reaches your children and public schools as well but the world is changing with accelerating speed to lead in shaping a new world order for the 21st century Our new Secretary of Education in Florida recently appointed AIR to receive the $220 million contract for end-of-course exam testing. Please go on their website. Click the link to what they're doing with youth and you will see what their agenda really is. 
they are promoting as hard as they can any youth that is interested in the LGBT agenda and even name it 2 hyphen S which they define as having two spirits. The Bible says a lot about being double-minded. These people that will now receive $220 million from the state of Florida unless this is stopped will promote double-mindedness in state education and attract every one of your children to become as homosexual as they possibly can. Drama Club advisor Terry Grimes is in trouble. <laughs> the parent says Grimes and some of her students on stage used the F word and other profanities and performed a skit about a priest wanting to have sex with kids. Then there were the awards for horniest stud and horniest girl, with the winner presented with what appeared to be a box of sex toys. A billboard in Alabama ruffled feathers among locals and netizens because it displayed a phrase from Hitler right next to a photo of smiling children. The sign, which had been installed at the Village Mall in Auburn, read, He alone, who owns the youth, gains the future. The quote was included in speeches the dictator made in the 1930s and historically reflects Nazi youth programs. We have never invested as much in public education as we should have because we've always had kind of a private notion of children. Your kid is yours and totally your responsibility. We haven't had a very collective notion of these are our children. So part of it is we have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents. Part of it is we have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents. You've seen and heard the statement by Melissa Harris Perry. Uh, we've recently uncovered some commonality with Adolf Hitler. Uh, uh, in the same quote. Now, Richard, this is the quote that we uncovered uh, from Adolf Hitler from a speech that he gave in 1933. He stated, when an opponent declares, I will not come over to your side, I calmly say, your child belongs to us already. What are you? You will pass on your descendants. However, now stand in the new camp. In a short time, they will know nothing else but this new community. As someone who's adept at translating collectivism into understandable English, could you tell us what she is saying here and the common ground that is shared with Adolf Hitler and why this should concern us? Well, that's a famous uh, quote by Hitler, but it's not the only quote that speaks about, you know, give us the control of your child by age five and we'll have him forever. Lenin said similar things. The Jesuits have said similar things. So it's all about indoctrinating our youth into a new way of life where the, the morals and values are irrational. They have no connection to existence and an individual becomes part of a collective through citizenship to a state. And once that citizenship to a state becomes tyrannical, if, you're, if your government's not serving you, if they're not acting like servants and they're acting like authorities, how did they get those special rights? What is the train of logic from me and you that they got rights that we don't have? And so when you encounter that irrationality, you have to stop and think because history does repeat itself and without focusing on the words that are actually being said for instance in that MSNBC propagandized promo there's four declarative sentences in there if you analyze the terms the terms are ambiguous the premises are untrue there's many contradictions within those four sentences and therefore it's an intellectually bankrupt position I don't want to speak on the messenger I want to speak on the message because when you do not dismiss that as arbitrary and carry on thinking that Oh, it's a good idea. Our kids belong to us, but they're also part of the collective. If you don't stop and analyze and question those declarative sentences, you are being taken advantage of. You are being duped. And that's what psychological warfare is meant to do. Richard, this may seem like an odd question for some of our audience, but could you focus on, on what statists mean when they refer to community? Uh, that, that is a term that's very commonplace, but is it correct to say that it takes on a sinister connotation when it's employed by the likes of Melissa Harris Perry? Well, again, I don't want to comment on the messenger, but let's think about it. Anything, when it removes your volition and your personal agreement from it, becomes tyrannical. So anytime you have a community that's based on collectivism, and collectivism is simply denying your right to life, the right to think your own thoughts, to property, and all that, that comes with it as a derivative. The, uh, the derivatives of that are known as the Bill of Rights, 
these, uh, in, these rights are endowed by logic and reason, and that's why they wrote them down. They should have written down maybe a preamble of, you know, existence exists, the king of Britain exists, uh, they're being tyrannical and, and gone down from existence. But when you break that off and you have that philosophy midstream, then it's open to attack, which you've seen the Bill of Rights be dissolved because people don't have that connection to these rights are there because you exist and because you have rights inherently as a human being to resist tyranny for your own survival. And so forgetting that brings us under control. Public schools in Fairfax County, Virginia are preparing to include gender identity in its curriculum for grades 7 through 12. The family life education lessons will include teachings on heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, and transgender identity. Andrea Lafferty of Traditional Values Coalition joins us from our Washington Bureau to talk more about this controversial subject. Andrea, thanks for joining us. It's great to be with you. Thank you. First of all, tell us about this curriculum and the motivation behind it. Well, it's interesting. Um, the school board voted uh, earlier in May to add gender identity. It's not a part of the state law. It's not a part of the uh, state school board instruction, but they've decided to add it against the will of many of the parents. And so now what we're dealing with is a vote on the family life education. Now, while we're talking specifically about Fairfax, I think it's important for people to understand this is happening across the country. So I may talk about Virginia, but listen carefully for your own community. Wow. Well, how will this curriculum impact the students? Well, it's very interesting. Right now, what will happen is starting in kindergarten, they'll talk to them about same sex or gay marriage. Um, and the, child, the parents will not be able to opt out. The big, one of the big issues is in Virginia, parents can opt their children out of certain parts of the, quote, family life education. And so now what they're doing is they're trying to move parts of it from FLE, family life education, to health, which means the parents cannot opt their children out. And so we've been pouring over the regulations and the information to see exactly what's happening. But we are very, very concerned that they are doing it here in Fairfax County and perhaps other places without the parents' knowledge or consent. In eighth grade, they will be discussing, let me just say, Bill Clinton's activity along with oral and anal. Um, in eighth grade, and most people, and, that, and they've lowered it from ninth grade, or teaching fourth graders about the word incest. Teaching fourth graders about the word incest. How far does that go? What, what is the difference between sexual orientation and, uh, sexual, uh, and gender identity? The difference between sexual orientation and gender identity is sexual orientation is who you have sex with and how you have sex. Gender identity is who you are, male, female. Are you born male or female? Are you born nothing? And they want to break down those definitions so you're no longer male or female as God created us. You're one of 52, quote, genders or one of 100 and something genders, depending on who you talk to. It is not clear, and it is not a part of our normal cultural discussion. I don't even think it's a part of discussion in France or other European countries. Uh, it, it, it's just bizarre. And they, again, they want to force this on the kids. They want to force this on the kids when, in fact, it's not a part of the SOLs or the required education. If you are now or have ever been a parent to a 15 year old, you know just how impressionable and fickle they can be. Keep that in mind as we tell you about a shocking new policy in one western state that would allow 15 year olds to have sex change procedures done without parents even knowing about it. Here's correspondent Dan Springer in Oregon. 
Fifteen-year-olds in Oregon can't smoke, give blood, or get a tattoo, but now they can get drugs to suppress puberty and even a sex change operation without their parents' consent, and the government will pay for it. It is trespassing on the hearts, the minds, and the bodies of our children. They're our children. And for a decision, a life-altering decision like that to be done uh, unbeknownst to a parent or a guardian is it's mind-boggling. The decision was made by Oregon's Health Evidence Review Commission, or HERC. With no public debate, it began covering cross-sex hormones, puberty-suppressing drugs, and sex reassignment surgeries for Medicaid enrollees in January. We have uh, uh, a very radical and even mutilating treatment being offered to children without any evidence, any evidence that the long-term outcome of this side is be, would be good. We tried repeatedly to get an Oregon Health Authority official on camera to explain and defend the sex change policy, but they kept putting up roadblocks. In fact, one spokeswoman even lied to us about the medical director's work schedule. So Nate and I noticed this article here um, about ABC and, and uh, this, this television program called Families. Uh, the Foster Family or whatever. The is what Fosters, this, yeah. The, the Fosters, yeah, this... this uh, this program is is promoting homosexuality, okay, uh, but it's also promoting pedophilia. Yeah. Uh, because, but hey, should we be surprised? Because this is an ABC show, and ABC is owned by Disney, That's and right. Disney are the king of the pedophiles. They always have been. Uh, everybody thinks that Disney's this great guy. Boy, there's some really scary stuff that you can go back and watch. Uh, about Disney and about uh, Walt Disney and, and and just how he dealt with little children and everything like that. There's a really creepy video yeah, out there sick stuff. that that shows it. But needless to say, uh, Disney promotes everything wicked, vile, disgusting, nasty, perverted that they possibly can. Uh, Disney is the most wicked organization on this earth, besides the Roman Catholic Church probably. But uh, second to the Roman Catholic Church, Disney is the most wicked, vile, disgusting thing in Hollywood uh, that, that you could ever find. I mean, if you are a Christian, you watch Disney programs, let me just tell you right now, you need to repent and get yourself right with God because you are not right with God because everything that Disney promotes is anti-Christ, right. is wicked, uh, uh, sodomite agenda, pedophilia agenda, transgender agenda. Everything against Christ is what Disney promotes. So what are they trying to do here? The goal is to desensitize you to sodomy. Now, who are they desensitizing here? They are desensitizing young children and families that watch this movie or watch these television programs. They are trying to normalize homosexuality, but not only homosexuality. You've got to understand this. They want to normalize pedophilia. They want to normalize underage pedophilia. Do you realize that if anybody but Walt Disney uh, and the Disney Corporation did something like this, like let's say in their private home or they did something like this, this would probably be – you'd probably be arrested for this type of activity. Right. It Absolutely. Would probably, it would probably be pornography yep. or probably be pedophilia yeah, or underage would. and all those things. How come right. Disney gets away with it? How come they could do it? Mainstream pedophilia, how, how in the world – can they get away with this? I'll tell you why. Because the god of this world runs Hollywood. The god of this world runs it. And that's exa and Disney works for the god of this world, which is Satan. This is a story again from the London Telegraph. Pedophilic interest is natural and normal for human males. This is at a presentation. Uh, the statement that pedophilia is, quote, natural and normal was made not three decades ago, but last July. It was made not in private but as one of the central claims of an academic presentation delivered at the invitation of the organizers to many of the key experts in the field uh, at a conference held by the University of Cambridge. So these are uh, academics. Uh, let's see. One of these guys, Brian Taylor, is a sociology lecturer at Sussex University. He's one that's saying this is natural and normal. And then there is another guy by the name of Ken Plummer, who is Emeritus Professor of Sociology at Essex uh, University. So these are academics. These are prominent universities in the UK. These are not, these are not some kind of pedophilia activist groups. These are guys that uh, teach at some of the leading universities in the UK, Sussex University and Essex University, saying that pedophilia is natural and normal for human males. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, we told you the day would come and it is here. I've covered various stories about how in Colorado they're allowing satanic doctrine into the school systems, how they're allowing pro-abortion pamphlets to be handed out, as well as satanic coloring books, which teach children about the Baphomet, 
about magic, about the craft, which is just absolutely absurd that that's going on. But even more absurd, or just as equally absurd, I should say, because you can't even take one without the other. They're both just so ridiculous, is the fact that in Colorado, they're really, they're really doing a lot of this testing. So they're doing, that's where the satanic doctrine is being handed out, as well as the teaching of same-sex education is really being tested in Colorado, as more and more schools are teaching same-sex marriage and gender equality. But what's more crazy about it is the age group they're teaching it to, which is preschoolers. So a preschooler whose parents felt it was pretty ridiculous that they were teaching same-sex education to a preschooler was expelled from the school because the parents had a problem with the doctrine that was being taught to the children. This is just more proof of this gay agenda that, that all the truthers have been talking about. This gay agenda, this agenda to defile God and God's word and the scriptures, which we know Satanists go out of their way to do. That's part of being baptized in Satanism. But the fact that if you think about it, a child in preschool is learning about gender equality and same-sex marriage and that it's okay to be involved in a relationship with the same sex when straight children aren't learning anything about even sex education in school until they're juniors in high school sophomores or juniors in high school we're talking about preschool we're not even talking about fourth grade we're not even talking about the puberty days and this is more proof that this is strictly done as a mechanism of mind control because if you study all of this stuff like i do like a lot of the truthers do and you've studied MK Ultra, and you've studied the Monarch Butterfly programming, you learn about the mind and how it works, and when it processes a lot of this information, and when these Satanists do all of this testing on these children, where they make them into MK Ultra slaves, where they do this to their own children, they do it at this age, when they are in preschool age, when they're young, while their brain is still developing. That's how they create these walls and these alter personalities in their mind, because their brains are still developing, they're not matured yet. And this is just proof, because at this age, while the brain is still processing things and it's learning so much information, like a brand new computer, it's being programmed. They are getting this gay agenda in the mind of children, children who don't even know what sex is. Children at the age in preschool have no idea what's going on as far as sex and feelings like that towards another person. So what they do is they teach these kids because boys are going to be hanging out with boys at that age and girls are going to be hanging out with girls at that age is they're telling them that while you want to play basketball while Timmy wants to play basketball with Johnny it's okay to have feelings towards him and to you know what I mean and they push that envelope where a child isn't even thinking about it but they're planting this seed in the mind of the child so that they feel drawn to people that are the same sex because they're hanging out with people who are of the same sex because boys and girls rarely would hang out in preschool they, you hang out with your own kind, right? A boy would hang out with a boy because they would like sports, and the girl would hang out with the girl, and they would do girl stuff. And as you grow older, then they cross over, right? Then boys and girls start hanging out. But they're breaking that barrier down because they know that the boys are hanging out with the boys, and the girls are hanging out with the girls in preschool. So they're pushing the sex education then so that the boys become promiscuous with the other boys, and the girls become promiscuous with the other girls. Because while they don't even know what sex is and they don't know what these things are, they have the school system feeding them this, telling them that this is good and this is okay. And then what do they do to the masses? They go, why is this a bad thing? We're teaching kids at a young age not to bully people of the op, you know, who are gay or bully people who are transgender. It is a brainwashing program. That's what this is. It has nothing to do with them caring about bullying. It has nothing to do with any of that stuff. You have children who don't know anything about sex. You're telling them about being open to these things while they're hanging around people of the same sex. And they're doing it in preschool. And like I said, you don't learn about sex until high school for anyone else out there when you learn about sex education and you learn about the sexual organs and the reproductive system and all that stuff and about how sex works, even though people find out on their own before they get to high school through whatever various mediums. I mean, it's on television all day and night. All they do is promote sex and nudity. Rihanna's butt naked in her music videos. So they're promoting it nonstop. But to teach it in the school systems and to teach it in preschool and then have the child expelled for that. The child's expelled. It shows you that if you don't go along with their programming, there's consequences to be handed out to people who don't go along with their agenda and what they say. And that's what this is. People going against this gay agenda, then they'll have people come out and say, 
what kind of parents are this? They don't want their kids to learn about equal sex rights. And you get the gays up against the Christians or against people who are against this. Everybody should be against it. Nobody should even be learning about this stuff in preschool. Preschool. We're not even talking about second grade. We're not even talking about sixth grade. When does a kid even hit puberty? Sixth, seventh, eighth grade? But they're learning about it in preschool. And it's like I've said over and over. This school system that they've created is to completely mislead the masses. They learn in a fake pseudoscience that the world came through evolution. They take God out of the equation. And then they shove the man and the woman, the parents, to work. Not because, oh, because they have equal rights and, the, and they both want to work because they're so prideful. They trick and convince the parents that what life is all about work and your social status so that the child is raised by the school system. And now you have the school systems teaching same-sex education, gender equality, which is absolutely absurd, gender equality. So they're teaching people that it's okay to be mental and to say, even though I'm a boy, I'm now a girl. I'm going to go in the girls' room. They're teaching that stuff. Then you have the other schools in Colorado handing out satanic coloring books, pro-abortion books, anti-Bible books. That's why they're pushing in Satanism into schools. That's why God's removed from schools. And that's why they're pushing same-sex and gender equality into schools where it doesn't belong. They're getting these kids at four years old, five years old, to hear about how it's okay to be a guy and to like a guy. And the kids get confused because they don't even know what sex is. But they're thinking to themselves, I must be gay because I'm hanging out with a boy all day. I'm playing baseball after school with other boys. Oh, so I must be gay. If you understand mind control and you understand when the brain is most vulnerable, you understand what they're doing with these kids is they are programming them at a young age to be gay, to be open to it, to create, if at the very least for them, to create a race of bisexual people. Because at the very least, that's what they expect to accomplish from this at the very least, but you'll see the numbers escalate as more and more people will be gay. And they'll say, it's just because more and more people are coming out of the closet, okay? It's because more and more people feel safe now, so they're coming out of the closet. It's a, such a total lie and such a total scam. It's not because people feel safe, so now more people are coming out of the closet. That's why there's more gays and gays appearing. It's because it's mind control. That's what it is, and that's what this gay agenda is about. This is just another example of them going after our children and brainwashing them. Education, if you, do, if you take any look at what's going on in schools at the moment, sex education is, is just being rammed in the faces of children, ever younger, five-year-old, and this is to get the children sexualized. And the reason they want them sexualized is because the plan is for... Uh, the age of consent to be removed, to be removed. And if you actually follow what Stonewall has been doing, they've steadily been pushing for the age of consent to be lowered. Um, but behind the scenes there was, well, it should be lowered to five. But what I'm going to tell you is they want to get rid of the age of consent altogether because in the new regime, paedophilia is to be inverted commas normal and acceptable i believe in all my heart that god's laid something on my soul that you need to hear this may very well be the church's finest hour this may be a moment where the church rises to what it ought to be this church in america may become what yamamoto said waking a sleeping giant it could be that the forces of hell have stirred the pot too many times. It could be that they pushed a little bit too hard. Yeah. It could be that they've got their way and they don't realize what their way is going to produce. For if I believe if there are millions of Christians in this country, if there are millions of born again believers in America, my friend, they have wakened a sleeping giant. Amen. It could be that for the first time since America has been a nation, that those people that named the name of Christ will finally come together and say we do have a common enemy. We've got a purpose. We've got a call. We've got a goal. And is there not a cause? Is there not a cause today? Has not enough happened to stir you up? Or what else needs to be done? Do they need to come through the door and take your kids and carry them out the back door and say they're ours now? We're going to turn them into sodomites and homosexuals and all of that. What will it take to awaken the church in America? at a Minneapolis private school are doubling down saying they fully support a student field trip 
to an adult sex store. But that is not sitting well with one parent who pulled his kids from that school and says this is a criminal matter. Fox 9's Jonathan Cho live in Minneapolis now. With the latest on these developments. Jonathan? Yeah, Amy, after pulling his three children from the school last week, this dad filed a complaint with Minneapolis police today, accusing some of the school leaders of exposing minors to pornographic material. And he's now considering his legal options. Lynn Floyd says he enrolled his children into Gaia Democratic School because of its emphasis on academic freedom and student-led instruction. Wanted to, our children to grow up in a, in, and remain children as long as possible. But says he never imagined that would include a first-hand look at sex toys and risque material. I don't see how it can continue how she should be allowed to lead children in this manner. Last week, Floyd says the school's sex education teacher, Starry Hedges, took about a dozen middle school and high school students on a field trip to an adult sex store called the Smitten Kitten in Uptown. After his 13 and 11-year-old daughters came home, they shared what they saw. Floyd immediately pulled them out of Gaia, including his three-year-old daughter, and says the school did not give him any notice about the field trip. All you had to do was ask us. This whole situation would have went a completely different way. Ms. Hedges is also the private school's director, and when we tried to get her side of the story, her staff kicked us off the school grounds. Do you have any thoughts on this visit to the Smitten Kitten? On our property, do I need to call the police? If you consider this revolting and perverted, understand that you will be seen as an intolerant, shallow person who should visit a psychiatrist. This is a usual playground slide. You don't believe it? Take a closer look. A boy of five is sliding down right there. This playground slide is in Norway, and it was put there in order to bring up children in a proper way, not to feel shy. This is just the beginning of this perversion. The gay marriage law being passed is just the beginning, folks. Okay, this is so twisted and sick. It's so twisted and sick that you just know that the Lord Jesus is on the way. Okay, do not think that our Lord and Savior is going to put up with them doing this to these little kids. And, and allowing it to be like this. This is total perversion. Okay, the Lord is coming. You people that think that he's not coming for years and years, you need to listen up. You need to wake up and smell the coffee and see the signs that are around you. These signs are right in front of your face. In Colorado, state law allows children to seek reproductive health services without parental consent. A clinic here in Colorado Springs is a division of Children's Hospital Colorado in Aurora, and it offers these confidential services to 12-year-olds. The children can get IUDs, birth control pills, and the Plan B pill for free, and you as a parent would never know. Also, your tax dollars are helping to fund these clinics, including the one right here in Colorado Springs. But controversy roiling among parents in Seattle as 13 schools are allowing girls as young as 11 to access invasive birth control without their parents' okay as part of a state-administered program. Among these are so-called long-acting reversible contraceptives, or LARCs for short, and these include IUDs and hormonal implants. A spokesman for the program saying, quote, a young person does not need parental consent to obtain a LARC or any other contraceptive method if the young person is not choosing abstinence she would be able to select a LARC and have it inserted without parental consent. Now pedophiles want the same right now as homosexuals. I knew that would happen because I mean that's obviously what they were going to do. Well you gave it to them you know I mean, what's wrong with us. That's discrimination and, 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 and we, 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 we really jump back at certain words now because we're trained to recoil at certain words. And, and, uh, and discrimination is one of them. So it says that using the same tactics used by gay rights activists, pedophiles have begun to seek similar status, arguing the desire for children as, as a sexual orientation is no different than heterosexual or homosexuals. Uh, critics of the homosexual lifestyle have long claimed that once it became acceptable to identify homosexuality as simply an alternative lifestyle or sexual orientation, logically nothing would be off limits. And gay advocates have taken offense at such a position, insisting this would never happen. 
However, psychiatrists are now beginning to advocate redefining pedophilia in the same way as homosexuality was redefined several years ago. Now, I went through uh, the meetings that they've had uh, with the various groups from, uh, from the, the, the psychiatric associations, associations and so on before. They have them every other year to try to legalize uh, pedophilia. And eventually, as I've said, pedophilia will be gone from the dictionary because uh, society is kaput now. Anyway, it's finished. I've, I've watched it my whole life, the whole agenda going down the tubes. They're actually going through the United Nations and through the rights of the child. And this is the latest attempt to get intergenerational or pedophilic sex going. And uh, you, you find that, uh, that the child, if a, if a parent uh, stops their child, child from having sex or with that old geezer, you know, uh, then uh, the parent is actually interfering with the, the, the child's right to choose. That's a tech that, it's a tech they're using now, you see. A shocking announcement made by the American Psychiatric Association, APA, in its latest edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders caused an uproar among pro-family organizations and many others. As the APA states, it now classifies pedophilia as a sexual orientation or preference instead of a disorder. Sandy Ryos, cultural expert and talk show host on the American Family Radio Network, has issued a statement on behalf of the American Family Association in response to the APA's position on pedophilia. Just as the APA declared homosexuality an orientation under tremendous pressure from homosexual activists in the mid-70s, now under pressure from pedophile activists, they have declared the desire for sex with children and orientation too. It's not hard to see where this will lead. <laughs> 